Greetings, Nick with Sweetwater here, and today we're going to learn the intro to the Def Leppard classic, Hysteria. So strap yourself in, and let's get rocked, 80s style. Hysteria is just one of the many hits from Def Leppard's huge 1987 album of the same name. This bad boy here. And when I say huge, I'm talking huge in the very truest sense, to the tune of over 20 million sales worldwide thus far, with a staggering 12 million of those being in the USA alone. To a great many folk, myself included, this album not only epitomized 80s rock along with its multi-platinum predecessor Pyromania, it literally redefined the genre sound. As already mentioned, today we're going to learn how to play the intro of this game-changing album's title track, Hysteria. I'm sure that you'll be delighted to learn that it's not only made up of a mere three chord shapes, but that two of them only require the use of two fingers. I repeat, two fingers, one, two. The other chord in the trio, it calls you to use three fingers. Darn it. All three of these chords also use the open G string note. The first chord shape is this one here. Two fingers and three strings. That's it! The name of this chord is D add 4. The first two notes in it, D and F sharp, these two, they make it a D major, as D is the root note and F sharp is the major third of D. Then by adding the open G string note, that makes it G add 4 because G is the fourth note in D major, like this. Although I've just shown you this chord using my index and middle fingers to fret it, I'm actually going to recommend that you finger it a different way when we play the actual riff. And you've got three choices. You can use your middle finger and ring fingers like this, or your middle finger and pinky, or last but certainly not least, your ring finger and pinky, like this. Now, I'm sure at this point you're probably scratching your head and wondering what on earth is wrong with me. Perhaps you've noticed this on my head and are wondering if maybe I've got some form of concussion. Worry not though, I'm fine. Well, relatively speaking, the reason for me suggesting these alternative fingers are all to do with the next chord shape in the Hysteria riff, which is G major seven with no third, namely this one. As you can see, it's the previous shape, this one, the D add 4, but with a G note at the third fret on the low E added as the new root note, namely this one here. So now we have this. So if I was to finger the D add 4 with my first and second fingers like this, that would make the change to the G really klutzy because I'd have to do a hand jump. No, I'm not going to do that. This way is much easier. Check it out. Way more efficient and way more logical. What a concept. So that's why I gave you three D add four fingering options, as they all make the change to the G shape much easier. You can do this one, or this one. Or this one. All require no up and down movement, so just pick the one that feels most comfortable to you. We now know two of the three chord shapes that are used in the clean intro to Hysteria. The final one, which is another two-fingered affair, is this one right here. A pretty chord that uses four strings and two fingers, and it's called E minor add nine. Here's why. These three notes here, namely E, B, and G, make up an E minor chord. And this bad boy here, the F sharp at the fourth fret on the D string, makes it a nine chord. The reason being, it's the ninth note of the E minor scale when you ascend it, just like this. That was nine notes, right? 
That was number nine. So now you have it, add nine. Let's move on. Now we know our three chord shapes. All we have to do is suss out the picking patterns and when to do the chord changes, and we're sorted. The first chord is the D add four, and the first six notes of the picking pattern are these ones. And again, a little slower. Let's break that down. All we do is hold the shape down and then pick the strings in the following order. A string, D string, A string, G string, D string, then A string again. Just like this. Pretty easy, right? Here it is again, a little slower. Like I said, A string, D string, A string, G string, D string, A string, in that exact order and in this timing. After these six notes, the vast majority of transcriptions and internet lessons say all you've got to do is repeat the last three picks, namely G string to D string, then A string, and do it twice, like this. So if you put that with what we've learned so far, you get this. And one more time, a little bit slower. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Pretty much exactly like the album track. Now to make it sound even more on the money, you need to lightly palm mute the notes on the A and D strings, just like this. Don't palm mute them too much though, just use enough to give them a nice bit of staccato pop. And also, do not mute the open G string. That sucker needs to be allowed to ring. To add further authenticity, add some compression, subtle chorus, and some reverb to your sound too. And maybe, just a smidgen of echo. Then, as the proverbial icing on the cake, to get that subtle percussive snap the band get, use a metal pick, just like Phil and Vivian in the band do. That said, here's the opening two bars of this eight bar riff one more time. Now you may have noticed that I said pretty much like the album when I talked about those last six notes, namely these ones. I say this because to my ears, if you listen very, very carefully with headphones to the start of the Hysteria song, you'll actually hear three extra palm muted D notes on the A string. They're very, very subtle, but they are there. I can hear them. Honestly, this is what I hear, my friend. I don't hear this. I actually hear this. Here it is again, a little slower. Like I said, it's a pretty darn subtle difference, but I can definitely hear it on headphones if I listen very carefully. And just so you know, it's the exact same riff, just with three extra D notes added in the second bar. It is, of course, very common knowledge that the band did a bunch of very clever guitar layering throughout this album, so maybe that's what I'm hearing, a combination of various layers and subtle overdubs. Or perhaps this knock to my head did give me a little bit of a concussion after all. Or maybe it's simply just a good old case of overthinking-induced OCD. Guilty. Having said all this, whatever. Either way sounds great to my ears, so go with the one you like. Now, even though I played it my way in the intro to keep things nice and simple, I'm going to play the version everyone transcribes from here on in, namely this one. Yeah, that's less confusing in my humble opinion, and it sounds great. Plus, there's less notes too, which makes it easier, and that's always good. Anyway, enough of my conjecture, on to the next chord and the next picking pattern, namely this one. This chord shape is a G major 7 with no 3rd. And as you've just heard, the picking pattern and also the timing of it is pretty darn simple, namely this. Mm -hmm. 
As you've just heard and seen, you merely go from the low E string to the G string, one string at a time, like this. And then when you've done that, you come back on yourself, pick the D string, and then the A string again, and you're done, like this. So the entire six note picking pattern is this. And one more time a little slower. So we're going E string, A string, D string, G string, D string, A string. That's it. And don't forget to lightly palm mute the three low strings, but not the G string. Let that one ring free and open, just like this. We do this twice before we move on to the next chord. So we do this. So if I add this to our first two bars, this is what we've got thus far. Next up is chord three, our old friend the E minor add nine, namely this one. And guess what? It uses the exact same picking pattern we've just learned for the previous shake, but it only does it once, like this. And again, just a hair slower. As I've just said, we only do this picking pattern one time on this chord shape, and then we change again and go back to the G major seven we played just before it, namely this one. And then guess what happens? Yep, the same exact six note picking pattern once again, this one. Nice, one more time. So, if I add everything up thus far, here are the first six bars of this intro. And one more time, just a hair slower. This gives us six of the eight bars in this intro, and that means we're a mere two bars away from being done. Hurrah! For these last two bars, we go back to our opening chord, our good pal, the D add four, and then pretty much repeat the simple version of the start, namely this. Not bad. So the whole thing is this. Are you ready? A little sloppy, but you get the picture. That's the whole thing. And there you have it, my friend, the catchy, clean intro to the title track of one of the biggest selling rock albums of all time, Def Leppard's hit-filled classic, Hysteria. Before I sign off though, it would be extremely remiss of me not to quickly touch on the other guitar part I played during the intro. And by the way, this part is a compilation of a few cool overdub parts on the record itself, and I did this so you can play it on just one guitar. So here it goes. This second guitar part doesn't come into play until the start of the fourth bar. And when that happens, you do this. You hit the natural harmonics directly over the fifth fret on the G, B, and high E strings, and then add some subtle whammy bar vibrato, just like this. As you can hear, I'm using a pretty clean sound to do this. Now you get the harmonics by lightly resting the fleshy underside of one of your fretboard fingers on the top three strings directly over the fifth fret, namely this part of your finger here, or this part, the fleshy underside. Your touch must be light though, very light. You don't actually push the strings down to the fret, you just lightly rest on them, very, very lightly. Having done that, you then pick those three strings and then straight after you've hit them, you lift your finger off like this. 
And hey presto, there are the desired natural harmonics. Nice. Now, if you've never done this before, I highly recommend you master the technique at the 12th fret first, as the natural harmonics there are a little easier to get, like this. Same exact technique, just at the 12th fret. Got it? Once you've mastered it there, go to the fifth, and before you know it, you'll have gotten this, my friend. Once you've done this, it's time to engage high gain, and you do this twice. What I'm doing here is this. I'm fretting the B note at the seventh fret on the low E string, this one here, and then just before I pick it, I push my whammy bar down a little. Then as soon as I hit the string, I bring my bar up, like this. And again. So the move is this. Fret the note, push the bar down, pick the note, then let the bar back up pretty quickly. Here it is one more time. Then, after doing that, I just hit the natural harmonics, the seventh fret on the D and G strings together twice, like this. And then I add a nice little vibrato with the bar. So the whole thing is this. Got it? Pretty simple, right? And you do that twice. Oh, and by the way, if you don't have a whammy bar, don't fret. You can do a pretty good fake with a quick string slide from the 5th fret to the 7th fret on the low E, like this. Granted, you can't add the vibrato afterwards, but it still sounds pretty good. Either way, with or without the bar, as Bono would say, you do this twice, and then you're on to the cool, repeated, palm-muted phrase which ends the intro, which is this one. Then repeat. This repeated six-note pattern is made up of just three notes, A, E, and D. I start with the A note at the seventh fret on the D string, followed by the E note at the ninth fret on the G string, like this. Then after a short pause, I play the E note again, followed by the D note at the seventh fret on the same string, the G string, like this. This is immediately followed by the A note on the D string again, and then the D note on the G string again, like this. So the whole six note phrase is this. And as mentioned earlier, it's played twice, back to back, just like this. And by the way, don't forget to palm mute the suckers. Now, if you watch the official Hysteria music video carefully, you'll notice that the late, great Steaming Steve Clark played this part in the fifth position like this. And if you watch the excellent Def Leppard Hysteria at the O2 DVD, you'll see that Phil plays this little motif here. So what we have there is the same six notes in the exact same order, just in different positions. And they're all good, so pick the one that feels best to you. Awful pun intended. Actually, when Phil plays it live, he does throw in an extra A note in between the two E notes. So instead of playing this, he plays this. So, it's now seven notes instead of six. All good. To be honest, I invariably tend to do the same thing if I'm not thinking. I guess it's just my 80s metal muscle memory kicking in, because after all, pedal point notes are good. Right, it's now time for me to sign off, and I'm gonna do so by playing the intro again along with the backing track one more time. And this time, I'm gonna play the start of the clean part, the simpler, less note way it's normally transcribed. As mentioned earlier, I did play my own interpretation at the start of this video, and I do like to do that one quite a lot. That said, I am a tad bias, and I also might just have a minor head injury. Also, just for giggles, I'm gonna throw in that extra A note we talked about in the repeated palm muted run at the end. 
Hey, if it's good enough for Phil, it's certainly more than good enough for an idiot like myself. Have fun with both versions of this classic Def Leppard intro, my friend. I'm out. See ya! Thank you very much indeed for watching Old Bean. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this, or start at sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs. Cheerio!